Hey everybody, Jerry Chook here from Drop Time Ridge, and this is episode number two of our three-part mini-series on shed hunting. That's right, today we're going to be bringing our dogs with us in the woods, and we're going to be talking about how you can get your dog to find some of these guys right here. Not to mention, we also have some cool product that we're going to be giving away during this episode from our friends over at Dog Bone Hunter that's going to make your training sessions with your dogs a heck of a lot easier. So let's get started. So with that being said, when do you start training your dog? Well, I got my dog at six weeks old, a little bit early, but I, chart, I started training her in my hallway right then at six weeks old. And it doesn't matter if your dog's six weeks old, seven weeks old, eight weeks old, nine weeks old, or you know, a six year old seasoned couch vet. All you gotta do is put in a little bit of time and work with your dog and they may be able to bring you some of these guys right here when you're shed hunting in the woods this winter and spring. Now what are you gonna use to train your dog? Well, lucky for you, shed hunting and training your dog is very, very cheap. All you need, obviously, is an antler. You can use a real antler like this guy right here or you can use a fake antler like this guy right here from Dog Bone. The other thing that you're gonna wanna use is you're gonna wanna use some scents. Again, I prefer dog bone. Um, I had the, the pleasure to hunt with Jeremy Moore a couple years ago down in Kansas, and he really opened me up on to having a great, what he calls, deer dog. And uh, so I really trust his products. He's got some great content on YouTube at Dog Bone Hunter on how to make your dog a better shed dog, and really a better deer dog for that matter. So with that being said, I like using his products, you know, the dog bone, antler, and scents. He's got a liquid scent, and he's also got a, uh, a wax scent that's in like a deodorant stick that you can use. So really, those are the only three things that you're going to need. Some scents, whether it's um, liquid or the wax substance, and an antler. Whether it's real or fake, it doesn't matter. I preferred starting off at the younger dog with the fake antler because they're not going to hurt, hurt themselves at all. This antler right here, it bends. Simple, easy, not gonna hurt themselves. This right here, it ain't bending as you can see as hard as you push, but they might poke themselves. So you're gonna wanna take it careful because you're not gonna wanna turn your dog off right away when it comes to shed hunting. So, how did I get my dog started in shed hunting? Well, like I said, at six weeks old, I started right there in my hallway. I started with a sock and I had a command word that I'd say after every throw. I'd throw that sock and then I'd say, go find it. And <laughs> Sadie actually just there picked her head up because she knows that's a good thing. So I would take that sock and <laughs> I'd throw that sock, go find it. And she'd come back, tail wagon. Take that sock from her, throw it again. She'd come back, tail wagon. And we'd continue to build up that, uh, that confidence with Sadie after every go find it. And the reason I did that in my hallway is because I didn't want any distractions. If I do it in a big room, she may get distracted. If I do it outside, she's certainly going to get distracted. So I wanted to cut off those distractions, so I did it in the hallway with her. And then she graduated on to the tennis ball. And again, I did that in the hallway. Throw the tennis ball. Go find it. Tail wagon coming back. Go find it. Tail wagon coming back. She'd get excited. She knew that that was a good thing when she heard good go find it. So then she graduated out to the real woods. That's right, we're talking my backyard. And what I would do there, I would just take that tennis ball first couple times, throw it, go find it, go find it. And I was really working on the retrieve at that point. Throw it, go find it. And she'd bring it back tail wagon every time. Just about every time, in fact. There were a couple times she couldn't find it where I'd have to help her out, but for the most part, she'd find it. She'd bring it back. So then I changed things up. I took that tennis ball and I took that wax scent and I'd sprinkle it up on there and I'd throw it. Go find it. Throw it. Go find it. Throw it again. Go find it. Until she built up enough confidence and realized, wait a second, there's something on this tennis ball. And every time he throws it and I go get it, I'm smelling this smell. That smell must be a good thing. So again, she's associating smell, that tennis ball, the go find it, with something good for me. Now, after she got really good at doing that, I really changed things up then. 
And I'd take her inside, I'd take that antler, and I'd take that wax, I'd apply it all over it. I'd simply throw it in the woods. Then what I'd do? Go on weather.com and check the weather. Now what the heck does the weather got to do with it? Well, I want to know what way the wind's blowing. So when I take my dog walking out there, I want to take her downwind. And when I take her downwind, I'm then saying, go find it. And she lights up. She's running around. She's all excited. And she'd find that antler and bring it right back to me. Now, we continued to do that and build her confidence before I threw her another curveball. So I'd take her inside the house again. I'd take that antler. I'd throw it on out there. And then I'd take that liquid scent. I'd sprinkle it on some leaves, okay? Then I'd go get my dog. And I'd walk the woods with her. I wouldn't say go find it just yet. I'd just walk the woods with her a little bit, letting her kind of do her thing. And then I'd get her close to that scent, making sure she's downwind. And I'd say, go find it. And she'd take off running up and down, tail just a wagon, eyes to the ground. She would get excited. And what I would do then is I would let her find that antler. And what she would find is, I found that scent, but I don't, I don't see this right here. What the heck? Well, that's when I'd start coaching her a little bit. And she'd be running up and down, kind of confused. And when she'd get close to that antler, I'd get excited. Good, 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 good. Building that confidence up, man, her tail would really start waggling then. And then she'd eventually find that. And eventually, over time, she realized that, hey, just because there's scent right there doesn't mean that this antler is going to be right there every time. I'm going to have to work for it a little bit and that's what I want to do. I wanted her to build that confidence up. So it took me oh, a couple weeks of doing that before she really got onto it. But boy was she excited when she did get onto that. And uh, now that she's four years old, I don't have to do it with her as much. I actually, you know, I really will start training her again in December, um, hiding the antler quite a bit, maybe three, four times a week and taking her out there looking for it. And then from there, you know, I, I kind of let go of it after shed season. And maybe, you know, once, twice, three times a month, I'll throw it out there and just kind of keep her familiar with it a little bit. But I'll tell you what, every time she hears that, go find it, or I poke this out right here, she is excited. Now, the other thing that I like to do is I like to change my areas up. I like to hunt sheds the way I train. And in the backyard, she's going to find these guys every time, three or four of them. I don't own a lot of property. I own about four acres. So she's going to find these guys every time in a half hour. Well, that doesn't translate into success in the real woods because we know that these guys are not at every little turn, every little hill, every little ridge, every little swamp, every little speed tour area. They're just not. It's literally like finding a needle in a haystack sometimes. So... I like changing up my training areas. I'll take her to other areas of public land. I'll work her in those areas, and I'll really bring her when I'm bringing when I'm doing these speed tours because it allows her to associate, you know, those oaks, that smell of hey, there's something good here, and that good is this right here. So I'll take in that five ten minutes. I'll throw an antler. And I'll walk the area, and then we'll come downwind, and I'll let her find this right here. And sometimes she surprises me. Sometimes she finds a real one. So. That's why I like to take my dog when I'm shed hunting, or sorry, when I'm doing those speed tours because you never know, you might find a shed like this. Now, the other thing that I like to do is I like to wear the same clothes. I like to wear the same jacket, same hat, same pants. I want my dog to be associated on, when I put that on, something good's gonna happen. And I'll tell you what, she knows it because she will not let go of my side. She's glued to my hip. She's going, Dad, we're going, we're going shed hunting. I'm excited. I can't wait. I can't wait. You know, she's jumping up and down. She's tail wagging. She cannot wait to go shed hunting. And in fact, in some areas of public land that I hunt, she knows it. Because as soon as we turn down that road, she is shaking. Her teeth are chattering. She cannot wait to get out of the car and find this guy right here. You know, so I'm associating those clothes, that area, with this right here. And she knows it. It's a good thing for her. So she'll just get out of that car and she's working right then and there. Um, the other thing that I like to do is when I'm shed hunting, I always bring extra antlers with me. A couple. If you don't have any real antlers, um, 
and you want to change things up from the uh, the fake antler look at antique festivals because you can get these guys i'm sure for three four bucks they're rather cheap and they're a great great shed hunting tool that you can use you know when you're actually shed hunting now i've been walking with my dog in the woods for a while now and there's times where i will actually see a shed and i'll let my dog find it but there's other times where i'll see a shed and i'm like good 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 getting her all excited and then she's going right to it, right to it, and then bam, she walks right over it. And it's like, Sadie, what are you doing? Well, that's my fault. That was a training error. Okay, again, it goes back to backyard. She's finding those antlers, three, four of them, you know, in a half hour. Well, like I said, it's not how it works in the real world. So I'll take some antlers and I'll throw them out there. I'll work her downwind, you know, every 10, 15 minutes. That way she's not losing, you know, concentration of what she's actually out there doing because there's a lot of distractions out there for those dogs and it's easy for them to get distracted. So you always want to take a couple antlers with you, fake ones or real ones, and let your dog find them while shed hunting as well, continuing to let her build her confidence and use her nose. So I mentioned at the beginning of this video that we're going to be doing a special giveaway and we absolutely are. So all you got to do to enter in this giveaway is go over to our Facebook page, Drop Tine Ridge, and give us a like. Go to the official shed post and drop a picture of your favorite hunting activity. Or ask us a question on shed hunting and we'll be sure to cover it in episode 3 of our, th of our three part mini series on shed hunting. And you're going to be automatically entered and do a chance to win some awesome dog bone product. And you're also going to be automatically entered into the ground prize for this guy right here. It's a great tool that you can use for shed hunting and you're going to want to take advantage of it. Speaking of shed hunting, if you want to learn some more information, go over to our friends over at Dog Bone Hunters YouTube page. He's got a ton of great information that's all free on how to make your dog the perfect deer dog. Hope to see you guys in the woods.